Hi guys, welcome to Back. Office Blokes Reacts. I'm Office Bloke Dave. <laughs> I'm Office Bloke Mike. I'm Office Bloke Daz. And collectively we are the Office Blokes. We are indeed. I'm a bit of a memory. Uh... I was trying to think of something funny to say and then I just... Be first. Yeah, I know. It really, it really would be. It really Keep trying, would be. Dave. We've got two other YouTube channels. How we many? try stuff. We talk about stuff. A couple of them. Um, and yeah, all that good stuff. Click the link in the description and it'll take you everywhere you need to go. Do it. Yeah, I'm, yeah, new I'm, merch. A, I'm a little bit shook. New merch. Uh, oh, shook up. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we've got new merch as well. Click the link. It'll take you everywhere you need to go. It is good. Who actually killed Tupac Shakur? <sighs> no idea. I heard it was Shug Knight who orchestrated it all. Well, he was with him on the night, wasn't he? Was he with him on the night? I think he was with him when he got shot, wasn't he? I've no idea. I'm not really well up on the story, I must admit. You look like you're into gangster yeah. rap. Well, you know, maybe. No. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not overly. He's more like, biggie than he is Tupac. Ah, fair, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. No, I've watched, Daddy and all that. Yeah. I have watched stuff on it before where essentially they were saying that Shug Knight was the guy that was orchestrating the East Coast, West Coast beef basically to boost record sales to lean into yeah. the whole gangster rap thing and obviously the consequences people were killed mm. i think it was supposed to be the theory i heard was it was a couple of ex-police officers or something yeah. that shot two back but like guns for hire i think yeah i'm guessing this video is going to tell us i hope so mm -hmm. but then no one's ever been done for it i don't so know well, knight's in really? prison isn't he mm -hmm. knight's in prison yeah but not for this mm. and I, i'm not i'm not really i'm like mike i'm not really into knowing what went on here um, yeah. I've never really saw, like, researched it and yeah. gone into him. So, like, so I think I saw it at the time, the news, but, not the, but, you know, I didn't, not known the details yeah. of it or anything. But uh, Before I got be into metal, to... I was a massive Ice, uh, massive Tupac fan. <clears throat> it was like yeah. Tupac and Ice Cube were the two guys I listened to all the time. Mm. And then I found metal and then yeah. lost interest. And that was it. Quite a quick, yeah. Yeah, but yeah interesting topic. Mm. We'll see how it goes. Who yeah. actually killed Tupac Shakur? September 7th, 1996, Tupac Shakur and Marion Shug Knight are driving in a 1996 hey, right. BMW 750 Sounds sedan like a heading Capri. eastbound on Flamingo yeah. Road in Las Vegas. At 11.15 p.m., a white four-door late model Cadillac pulls up alongside them. The black window of that car rolls down. As Tupac realizes what's happening, he tries to clamber into the back seat. Bullets are fired in rapid succession from a 40 caliber Smith & Wesson Glock 22. Knight is only grazed by bullet fragments, but Tupac is seriously hurt. He's been hit twice in the chest, once in the thigh, and once in the arm. Knight puts his foot down and heads toward Las Vegas Boulevard and Harmon Avenue. There, a bike patrol pulls them over and immediately alerts paramedics. The two men are soon taken to University Medical Center. On the way to the emergency room in a frail voice, Tupac says, I'm dying. He's right. Days later, his girlfriend, Kidata Jones, asks him, Do you know I love you? Do you know we all love you? She thinks he manages to nod even in his terrible state. He'll soon be dead. But what actually happened? Who killed Tupac? This has become one of the most enduring mysteries in recent times. First, let's look more closely at the be a bit sketchy mm. to order a hit on someone and be in the car with them at the time they were shot wouldn't it bit risky isn't it really yeah yeah especially if someone did you say fully auto the gun or did i just imagine that i, I didn't imagine hear that it. bit yeah, right. yeah imagine that. fair enough <laughs> Bench that night. Tupac and Knight had just watched Mike Tyson beat Bruce Seldon at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. The fight lasted a grand total of 109 seconds. Another fight later broke out in the lobby of the hotel with Tupac and friends and Los Angeles gang Southside Crips member Orlando Anderson. Tupac was told by a guy in his entourage named Trayvon Trey Lane that Anderson had stolen his death row chain and pendant a while back in a footlocker store in Compton. Lane was a member of the MOB Pyrus gang, an enemy of the Southside Crips. Tupac approached the guy and said, you from the south, and punched him in the face. Soon after, he told his girlfriend that this guy had started a fight with me for nothing. He also told her, something's up, you stay here. MGM Grand video surveillance showed Tupac, Knight, and their entourage beating Anderson until security broke it up. There must have been about six people kicking the guy when he was down, a beating perhaps severe enough to enrage a man enough to commit murder. Just after 11 p.m., Tupac and Knight were driving down Las Vegas Boulevard, heading to Knight's Club 662, where they were pulled over by the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department Bike Patrol. They were told they were playing music too loud and asked why the car didn't have a license plate. There was one in the trunk, and the cops let him go. Just a few minutes later, they stopped at some traffic lights in an intersection at East Flamingo Road and Cobalt Lane. In the car behind were their bodyguards. There were two cars in front, and to their side, there was some woman in a car. Tupac rolled down the window and invited them to the club, paying little attention to what was going on elsewhere. Then that Cadillac pulled up. He's a fucking pest. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> hey! You know what? When you're a famous rapper, I think you can just go come to the club like that, and girls will just hey. go, yeah. yeah. 
No, if you're a famous tracker, you say you find me in the club. Ah, uh, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Beside them, it had California plates. Some reports state that the guy shot from the window, but others said he got out of the car. Whatever happened, 13 shots were fired at Tupac, who survived being shot five times just two years earlier, wasn't going to survive this one. By the way, Tupac thought rapper and enemy Biggie Smalls had a hand in the previous shooting. Some people still think Biggie, a man that was gunned down in a way not dissimilar to the way Tupac was killed, was involved in the Las Vegas hit. All will be explained later. Okay, so what happened next? As you know, night sped off, tires screeching. Chris Carroll, who was was then working with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department said he was on the scene when the car stopped again. He said Knight got out and was running around with blood gushing from his head. Carroll said in an interview years later, I mean the guy had clearly been hit in the head but he had all of his faculties. I couldn't believe he was running around and doing what he was doing, yelling back and forth. He said he managed to open Tupac's side and his body just fell out of the car. Carroll with a gun in his hand grabbed hold of Tupac, blood was everywhere. Knight started yelling, Pac, Pac, while Carroll thought Tupac was almost dead. For that reason he tried to get a dying declaration declaration from him so the cops would have an idea about who had shot him. Did Tupac actually see who had pulled the trigger? There had to be a chance. Carol said this is what happened next. And then I saw his face. In his movements, all of a sudden, in the snap of a finger, he changed. And he went from struggling to speak, being non-cooperative, to an I'm at peace type of thing, just like that. He went from fighting to I can't do it. Carol said at that moment, Tupac looked into his eyes. Carol looked back at him with a grave expression on his face, thinking Tupac might name the shooter. He asked again, who shot you? Tupac took a breath as if trying to find the energy to get something out and then he said f you after that he became unconscious <laughs> tupac was taken to the hospital <laughs> it's not very helpful is it <laughs> i don't know why that made me chuckle so much but there's a cop trying to help you who shot you what's going on fuck you that might have been who shot him it might have been the cop might have then just held his face for a minute and hey, like, well, oh, going to rest fuck you yeah you always got to be nice to cops always got to be nice to cops but he's got no license plate on his car Right. It, it, you're going to suggest that he was probably up to naughty things anyway mm. so if they, if they just kick the shit out of a guy in a hotel foyer six of them on one guy that's, that's on the saying. floor <clears throat> in a land yeah, where loads yeah, of people I mean. are gun owners then it's a dangerous game isn't it yeah if six guys kick shit out of me on the floor I'm going back <laughs> and I've got a gun <laughs> <laughs> better be fucking fast runners and all that uh, wow another officer on the way failing to get a dying declaration out of him. Nothing. Tupac was out of it. One foot was already in the grave. His girlfriend said that at one point in the hospital he did regain consciousness for a very brief moment and that was when she played a song called Vincent by Don McLean. She said his eyes seemed to move and he moaned a little bit, but he wasn't able to speak. When she said move your legs if you can hear me, the sheets moved at the end of the bed, but then he was soon convulsing and the end was near. Not weeks earlier, he told her he'd even consider having kids with her despite the fact that he'd said before he didn't want to bring kids into to a corrupt world. That night he told her I'd take a bullet for you. When they were packing to head to Las Vegas, she asked him if he wanted to take his bulletproof jacket. He replied, no, it'll be too hot. Had Tupac been able to talk on his deathbed, perhaps he might have been able to say a name. Had he not issued that blunt two-letter pronouncement to the cop, maybe he could have uttered something that would have led to an arrest. Alas, he did not. Tupac never spoke again. So, who killed him? Well, the theories over the years have been churned out almost as frequently as rappers have been charged with serious crimes. One thing's for sure, Tupac had enemies. But then, back in those days where beefs were settled with bullets, just about every big name in hip-hop had some seriously violent enemies. An obvious enemy of Tupac that night would be the guy that got beaten up in the lobby. First of all, while Tupac might have told his girlfriend that some dude had just attacked him, the truth is Tupac started the ruckus. Anderson may well have snatched a chain from Lane in the past, but he didn't start that fight. He denied that he had anything to do with the shooting, although rumors surfaced that he had bragged about doing it. This he later strenuously denied, telling the Los Angeles Times in an interview that he was actually a big fan of Tupac's. It would turn out that this guy had a lot of different faces. One of the guys that was there that night was Yaki Gaddafi. He was a witness to the shooting. The police, though, didn't even follow up on this. Pity. This kid was found dead in a stairwell just three months after the Tupac shooting. It was said he was accidentally shot by Ronnie Beale, a cousin of a member of one of Tupac's group, Outlaws. The cousin, the rapper Napoleon, later said in an interview that the accident had likely happened because the guys had taken LSD. Still, there are plenty of people that think that Gaddafi was taken out because of what he had seen. Just to let you know, we're not... What the fuck? <laughs> I'm getting a bit yeah, baffled. Yeah. That's the name yeah. and half that, though, isn't it? Yaki Gaddafi. Yaki Hello. Gaddafi, isn't it? Yeah. So he's a witness but was never interviewed. I presume his stance would have been fuck you to the cops as well if that was Tupac's stance. Quite possible. Well, that's the... Maybe the cops said to him, did you see anything? And he just went, nah. Yeah. Even it though he did. Yeah. And then got could've killed. Been. And then got killed. Are you suggesting by the police? No, by... If he oh. knew who the shooter was, then... 
he's been taken out. Mm. That's what they're hinting at there, isn't it? Mm. That's baffling. Mm. Talking about fully grown adults here. When Tupac was killed, he was 25, and only 23 the first time he was shot. When Gaddafi was killed, he was 19. Napoleon was also 19 when it happened, although he didn't die. Biggie Smalls was just 24 when he was killed. There's evidence that the part of the brain called the prefrontal cortex doesn't stop developing until we're 25. This is the part called the executive suite, where rationality comes from. The organic machinery that tells you to calm down and not do something stupid. You could say this had a lot to do with the murder. As for Anderson, he was gunned down in 1998 when he was 23. He attempted to get some owed money from another guy and he shot him. A firefight ensued and Orlando died as a result. So was this guy Anderson a natural born killer? His half brother Pooh didn't think so, saying in an interview about him, he never caused a problem. One thing about him, he was always involved in positive things, always, always, always. He said Anderson wasn't a gangster, nor did he kill Tupac, and he was actually just a fan. Still, the Compton cops said Anderson was definitely in a gang, even though he was one of the more quiet ones and actually pretty cool. Another friend of Anderson said this about him. We all had problems with our parents. Our mothers were on crack and our dads weren't around. Orlando had something I didn't have, and that was family. He said Anderson didn't do drugs, he didn't smoke, and he wasn't keen on alcohol. He went to school, and unlike most of his friends, he didn't have a criminal record. But then he became known as that guy who shot Tupac, even though his past suggested he was not the kind of person to do such a thing. He even once said, God is with me. I'm not going to worry about it. I can't spend the rest of my life worrying about Tupac. It's a complicated story, but police were looking for a reason to lock up Knight, who was the owner of Death Row records. He was considered more of a godfather type character than a mere gangbanger. His record label had the cops on payroll, cops who were stealing vast amounts of cocaine and sometimes stashing it in the death row offices. We're talking about huge amounts of corruption here. It was part of something called the Rampart Scandal, and that corruption could have affected how police investigated gangland murders. The Rampart Corruption Task Force discovered that quite a few police had been hired to work as security for the death row label, earning tons of money and basically being gangsters at the same time they definitely weren't doing their jobs as police officers, it's a theory that a corrupt cop, Ralphio Perez, was actually behind the Biggie shooting, with Knight being the one who hired him. Why? Because Knight thought Biggie was behind Tupac shooting. Ok, we digress, and we understand this is all complicated, but we wouldn't be doing the story justice if we didn't go down a few bent avenues. So cops, non-gangster cops, understood that Knight had his fingers in a lot of illegal pies. They wanted to take him down, and so with the CCTV footage from the fight in the MGM Grand Lobby, they thought they could put him behind bars. Anderson told the police that Knight had indeed been one of the attackers, but when it was time to say that on the witness stand, he didn't just say that Knight had hit him, but that he was actually trying to stop the fight. The judge knew that Anderson was lying, but he didn't know that he'd very likely been paid off by Knight. Knight had done similar things before, once paying a huge bail sum for Tupac's release after he was convicted of sexual assault. When Tupac was a free man, he later told Knight over champagne, I'm gonna make Death Row the biggest label in the world. Back to Anderson. With the cash, he was going to start his own record label, but that didn't happen happened because he was killed. Two other young men also died that day. By the way, all this happened just days after Anderson had settled out of court with Knight for the damages he suffered when he got the beating. Had he had lived, he would have gotten $78,000. Now we'll introduce you to Dwayne Keith D. Davis. Mm. This is like one of the uh, <laughs> simple, is it simple, no, the history of the entire world and history of Japan, you know where you've just been hit with that many facts in a row. You could say oversimplified then, but I don't think it's oversimplified. No, it's not whatsoever. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Crazy web of yeah. deceit and shootings and paying off. And it's just the culture, isn't it? you know, the hip hop culture with the shootings and then keeping quiet to the police and not getting police involved. And it's, uh, yeah, wow, <laughs> a lot going on. It's baffling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah all just a bit. Yeah. A former Southside Compton Crip who back in the day made millions of dollars selling drugs. He's also the uncle of Orlando Anderson. Davis, who now has cancer and is immune from prosecution, said not long ago it was time to come clean about Tupac's murder. He said he was in the Cadillac that night and so was his nephew Anderson. He didn't say who pulled the trigger but said the bullets were fired from the back seat. In separate interviews he claimed Anderson fired the gun. As the rounds continued flying I ducked down so I wouldn't get hit, he said. Davis said that driving the car was Terrence T. Brown Brown. And he was beside him also in the front. He claims DeAndre, Dre, Smith, and Anderson were in the back, but you can't ask Brown about that because he was shot and killed in 2015 in a Compton medical marijuana shop. You can't ask Smith either because he died of a heart attack in 2004. Both men were said to be gangbangers. Davis had said that the hit was due to the beating his nephew had taken, which fueled the fire that was already raging between the rivalries. He also said that there was a bounty on Tupac's head, $1 million offered by Sean Puff Daddy Combs, the man whose record label Bad Boy Records had Biggie signed to it. James McDonald, who was no <laughs> So allegedly, wow. uh, Puff Daddy or P. Diddy 
put out a million dollar yeah. bounty on Tupac's Tupac head. Ted. And that guy claimed it. Wow. Did he ever get paid, though? Maybe he just could have had the royalties for uh, I'll Be There For You. Was it the tune that he did a, the Biggie tribute? Was it I'll uh, Be There For You? The one that was a Sting, Sting song. Yeah, Police. The police. Um, yeah. I'll Be There playing. For You. That's the Rembrandt's one. That's the Rembrandt's, yeah. I've been watching Friends, friends. Yeah, watch yeah, recently. Yeah. I really have. Clearly. <laughs> yeah. You know Every which breath one you take. Yeah. Every breath yeah. you take. That's yeah. The one. Andrew to gang violence and once worked security for night confirmed that after that snatch of the chain in Compton, tensions heated between the Southside Crips and the mob Piro Bloods. He said that on the night of the murder, he was posted outside Club 662 and saw a Cadillac whose occupants were Southside Crips. He said as soon as he saw the car, he called his brother Anton, who was one of the guys who was involved in the beating. Anton, who was later killed himself in gang violence, was warned that the Southside is in Vegas and that something is up. If you look at this case, it seems in all likelihood the shooting was just another part of the so-called thug life, with someone basically being shot over a chain and a pendant. What preceded it was violence, and what followed was violence, and all in the name of not losing face in a world where respect was paramount but vitally missing when it came to human life. The writer Rob Marriott put it perfectly, it's become obvious to anyone paying attention that the gangsta image, for all of its force and bluster, is nothing if not tragic, a myth of empowerment with the capacity to rob our generation of its potential greatness. Mr. Knight is now serving a lengthy prison term for voluntary manslaughter. According to former LAPD officer and investigator of the Biggie and Tupac murders, Greg Kading, Knight was definitely behind the killing of Biggie. In a Q&A he did on Reddit, he said he's sure Anderson pulled the trigger that night. He also thinks Puff Daddy actually did offer that bounty. Still, no one has ever been convicted of the two murders. Now, you need to watch The Most Dangerous Streets in the World, or have... Really interesting. Mm. Wow. Baffling at the same time. So much yeah. information. I think the answer is I don't know. No, it's, uh, it was Anderson, yeah. wasn't it? It sounds like it, yeah, but no one was ever convicted. Yeah, it can't be proven, he's dead. can it? Well, I said on your deathbed, the the guy that they said had cancer. Hmm. I'm guessing past the statute of limitations or something. If he started admitting to being hmm. there, yeah, um, that could be a lie. Could be. That's it. I think it's a two pack quote that we can end on though. When he said, "Live by the gun, die by the gun." True. Oh, it's absolutely nothing to have been said, really, is it? They're all dead. <laughs> I, I know, it yeah. just shows the culture, but the, you know, the amount of talent in hip hop has been lost as well. You know, so you the gun culture Loads, and things like that. Yeah, you know, it's unbelievable, isn't but it? Yeah. We've you done know. one Tupac reaction. Mm. Uh, Brenda's got a baby. And uh, right, yeah. it, it was a tough one. It was a mm. tough yeah, video to watch. Yeah, um, so. And I know we've got a Patreon request for another Tupac mm. song, so there is going to be more coming. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he was a great, he's a great talent. He meant talent. Well, yeah. so it's so talent, big. you think. But, yeah. So yeah, big. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you think, yeah. why? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a waste of life, isn't it? Oh, it really? Massively, is. yeah. That's what it want to be, isn't it? Act tough and, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I can see how people want respect and things like that, but I mean, you know, it's just, you know, th the things that they're losing life for just don't seem worth it, does it? Or well, it certainly doesn't to us anyway. Chat shit, so, get banged. I was just say. about to say yeah. that. I was just about to say yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I hope but, you guys like yeah. that too. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the bell, and we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, Cheers. guys.